A very good morning, good evening and good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Boys and girls, thank you so very much for tuning on to the Life Signatures Radio. You are very much welcome. This is a daily show that is focused on the subjects of purpose and productivity and resilience. It's a virtual incubator for those three. And also there are some other aspects of life that we do touch upon that are centered around purpose, productivity and resilience. We are in the middle of a long series, more than 30 episodes, I should say, where I've been talking about raising spirit-led children. Very absolutely important. And we've looked at six ways so far. Actually, we're on the sixth way that you can be able to raise a spirit-led child. And today we're going to continue talking about the same, the sixth, and we're going to go deeper into it. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. So you are not raising a spirit-led child, number one, if you do not teach them to cherish their inner compass. Number two, you are not raising a spirit-led child if you do not teach them the importance of self-extraction. Number three, you are not raising a spirit-led child if you do not nurture and nourish their creative capacities. Number four, you are not raising a spirit-led child if you do not teach them the value of growth and personal development. And number five, you are not raising a spirit-led child if you do not teach them to be humane. Number six, you are not raising a spirit-led child if you do not speak into their spirit. These are things we've discussed over the past several episodes. And if you really want to get the gist of the matter, and if you are interested in the subject matter, please go back and just chew on these things. This is like a book, my friends, like a book. It's like a book. It's like an audio book on the subject matter. I should charge you. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, number six, we say that you're not raising a spiritual child if you do not speak into their spirits. Someone might be asking, how in the world am I going to speak in their spirits? I advise you, if you want to get the gist of this topic, go back three episodes and start listening. That's where we basically gave the introduction and went deeper into it, just dissected it. And now we are looking at how exactly are you going to do this? Number one, we said it is through naming. What name are you giving your child? Huh? And also, what name are you giving your business? I see very many Christians naming their their businesses religious, not religious actually, Hebrew names. Shiloh or uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, all these things, Bethany and, and so on. And you think that if you're going to name your business a name that is in the Bible, then your business is going to be blessed. Okay, it doesn't work really that way. When it comes to naming human beings, it's that powerful. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to delve into it again because we already covered it yesterday. Today, let us look look at this. How are you going to speak into the spirit of a child? Number two, seeing them, seeing, seeing them, as in looking and seeing. But let me unpack that for you, because I know it, it sounds confusing. You see. You see people not as they are, but as they could be. This is so much connected to naming. 
you name someone as they could be but the naming is an event the seeing is continuous there is something that i saw in uh, social media pages some days back that i'm going to share with you it's actually a quote a very powerful quote that kind of speaks into this thing that i am i am discussing here about seeing and this is what this quote says it says your brain is always searching for proof of what to tell it of what you tell it sorry it's called confirmation bias and it works like this if you believe nothing ever goes my way your brain will highlight everything that confirms that belief and it will pronounce it and underline it and show it to you all the time that is what you're going to experience that's going to become the reality kind of your reality but if you tell yourself i know things can be better your brain will start finding your brain is a search engine a natural search engine it starts looking for evidence to support that idea your mind is just doing its job actively looking for evidence to reinforce the world you are creating in your own thoughts so remember be conscious that you have the power to shape the world around you and this power like i've said end quote this power like i've said it starts with you seeing what do you intentionally see you've got to i mean look past the reality your child brings a report back home and it's zeros and so on and so forth what da, what what does your mind say in the days that have passed parents minds will tell them that i have a stupid zombie in the house it's like a cow living in my house and you know what they will treat those kids the exactly as their thoughts are the same thing happens in marriage if you see and you have bad thoughts against your spouse all along what your brain is going to do is going to google is going to search is going to chat gpt and look for every evidence and it will find all the bold evidences of what what you are thinking negatively about your spouse it becomes like a self fulfilling prophecy they might be very good people of course they might be also bad people but they might be very good people but your thinking is becoming conscious and it's cementing some kind of what the bible calls a stronghold it is that critical so what do you see stop seeing what you see remember that timon uh, uh, lion king one and a half it's one of my favorites if not my favorites where rafiki tells timon to go to hakuna matata you've got to see beyond what you see you've got to see beyond what you see the seeing is a spiritual thing is a highly spiritual thing because what you see is what you're going to speak and what you speak is what is going to become thoughts become things we learned this through that uh, video called the secret if you if you ever watched it you know you need to see people not just as they are but as they could be this is perception it goes far beyond seeing just the academic prowess just seeing their things that they are doing you see greatness you see revolutionaries you see men and women of renown you see humane people you see world changes your perception will determine how you will treat them by the way because if you know you are with a world changer in your house you're not going to treat them like trash your perception will determine how you will treat them and what you will speak to them and when you speak remember words are powerful when you speak into their spirit you don't just speak because you're speaking you don't just speak because there are words to speak in your head those words that we normally unleash and we normally speak we've got to save them seriously because words go the, the bible talk, says it's like a choice muscle it's talking about gossip it says gossip is like a choice muscle it goes da- deep down 
so we 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 perceive right we perceive greatness we, we perceive revolutions we perceive impact we perceive contribution we perceive this greatness and we speak into it in fact every time we are confronted with quote unquote reality which is against our perceptions we speak our perception and not foster the reality this happens not just in parenting this happens also in relationships invariably let me tell you this people draw closer to those who speak positive to them and people drift apart to those who are always complaining always nagging always speaking negatively they draw apart it's just a matter of time be- before it's finalized and the same thing happens when you're speaking to the spirit of someone else matters related to the spirit of your child will always be matters related to faith not religion faith you know what faith faith is a substance of things hopeful i the evidence of things not seen you haven't seen the greatness you haven't seen the revolution but what do you do you speak into it you speak into it we you, you speak into it especially because you're someone in authority there is an order in the spirit there are spiritual authorities and the first spiritual authority a major spiritual authority in someone's life is their parent what you speak the bible tells us the power of the tongue life and death is in the power of the tongue you can speak blessings and you can speak curses and they are potent enough to come to pass I know it can be controversial to talk about, you know, abortion, matters related to abortion, but perhaps the cases of abortion could reduce if parents just could exercise this kind of perception that the thing I am carrying is a president. The thing I'm carrying is a an, an inventor. The thing I'm carrying is a, a great human that is going to impact the society. Have a little faith in your people. Have a little faith in your child. Learn to speak to them. See them as great as they can be. You have absolutely nothing to lose. You have nothing to lose. Cherish that greatness in your heart. I know it's very easy to do this when they are bright and they are shining and all that stuff. It is actually difficult when you don't see the evidence. The reality on the ground is totally different. They're bringing back bad reports. They're behaving badly and so on and so forth. But your perception, you are seeing them. You've got to be tenacious in this seeing. You see them as great. And you're going to treat them as great. And you're going to speak greatness into their hearts and into their lives. And they will see. They will see your perception. They will turn around. And they will start behaving like the great people you think they are or you perceive that they are how you treat them will be a direct result of what you believe about them what you choose to believe about them don't you ever let someone else define their lives by labeling them or by speaking to them there are teachers out there there are bullies out there there are, there are friends out there who can speak negative things your responsibility my responsibility if we're raising spirit led children is to counter these things by seeing in the spirit the greatness that is yet to come and it's a, an an issue it's like a muscle you need to exercise that muscle the more you have this seeing the more you have this perception the more you tap into the spirit and you can actually see who they really are you can prophetically speak who they really are and let me tell you this prophecy is not a religious thing it's a human thing it's a spirit thing why am i saying that i'm saying that that because even someone who is not spiritual can prophesy someone sorry someone who's not religious can prophesy someone who does not subscribe to, to any religion can prophesy because prophecy is a human thing it's a spirit thing because it's a human thing because a spirit thing Well, I don't have time to derive all these things, but just know this. If you're going to raise a spirit-led person, 
you've got to learn to see them. Not as who they are, but as who they could be. Tomorrow we go deeper into this. Until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.